The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord said, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, and that word is coming to you tonight. What did the Lord tell Jeremiah? What did he show him? And what are we learning here? I'm talking to you tonight on this special message, making supernatural miracles out of serious mistakes. Making supernatural miracles out of serious mistakes. Look at your life. Sometimes it's daddy and mommy that made a mistake. And the mistake then surrounded you, overwhelmed you. The mistake almost destroyed you. And you're wondering, if daddy and mommy had not made a mistake like this, I would not have been where I am. But the Lord wants to tell you tonight, He wants to take every mistake upon your life. And He wants to turn every mistake to a miracle. Sometimes it's the mistake of other people. A teacher made a mistake concerning you. A principal made a mistake concerning you. Or a neighbor made a mistake concerning you. And then it, it brought something upon your life. It might be a permanent deformity. It might be a permanent setback. And every time you look at other people of the same age, of the same community, you say, I could have done what they have done. I could have been what they have been. Except for this mistake that so and so and such and such made that affected my life. But the Lord is telling you tonight, He is greater than every one of them. He's going to reverse every mistake of your life and He's going to turn that mistake, He's going to turn it into a miracle. Sometimes it is you yourself that by your own carelessness, by your own sinfulness in the past long ago, that you took this step and this step and this step. And you're saying, I cannot blame anybody. This is all my fault. This is what I've done. It is my mistake. Do I have any, any mouth to complain? Do I have any reason to complain? If I had not gone this way and that way and that way, I would not have been where I am. And therefore, I am suffering for the mistake I made myself. And the Lord said, yes, I know. But the love of God is greater than your mistake. The power of God is greater than your mistake. And the mercy of God upon your life is greater than your personal mistake. It's going to take every mistake you have made in your life. And it's going to surprise you. And it's going to bring a miracle out of every mistake in Jesus' name. And that's what we're looking at this message. Making supernatural miracles out of serious mistakes. And so God called Jeremiah. God said, Jeremiah, I'm going to tell you something. But before I tell you something, I'm going to show you a picture. And when you see that picture, I will give you the interpretation of that scripture. Look at verse 2. Arise and go down to the porter's house. And there I will cause thee to hear my word. You are the porter's house tonight. The Lord is going to remold you. He's going to remake you. And when you come out of this place, and you know, when you go back home, those who saw you before, they will not see you again. They thought after you listen to those series of messages by our great, great leaders and preachers at the retreat, and then the other one, uh, you know, added to all those messages, the people thought that God had finished with you. God said, I'm just touching with you. With all those great things God did in your life, with all the turning and out transformation He did in your life, you thought, praise the Lord, I thank God for what God has done in this wonderful retreat. But the Lord is saying, that was just a little portion. I'm going to do something that you yourself, you'll be surprised about yourself. 
and that's why he brought you here today to this potter's house there's a transformation tonight there is a transfiguration tonight there is a remolding tonight and there's a repassioning tonight that the lord is saying a new thing is coming and that new thing i will see that new thing upon you the power of god will so take you like this and reform and transform you that everyone will rejoice concerning you in jesus name and so you find in verse 3 now in verse 3 it says then i went down to the porter's house and behold he wrought a walk on the wheels and the vessel that he made of clay was mad was distorted was destroyed was deformed a mistake was made in the hand of the porter so he made it again another vessel you know some people say if a mistake had been made in refashioning that vessel in making that vessel and in uh, making the vessel what he thought to be now there was a mistake a deformity a kind of destruction some people think the potter will just throw that away there's no use for this it's gone it's bad it's dirty it's deformed and therefore there's no use again no god doesn't work that way and so he says he made it again to another vessel as seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can not I do with you as this potter, says the Lord? And the Lord is asking the same question Cannot I do this with you? What I did with this vessel, what this potter has done in looking at you again, what's the best I can get out of this? Look at what has happened, look at the deformity. Look at the destruction and look at the negative thing that has happened. Look at the great mistake. Look at the serious mistake that is made on the life of this person, on the family of this person, on the, pro on the profession of this person, on the Christian life of this person, on the ministerial duties of this person, on the work and the assignment I gave to this person. Look at the mistake that has been made. And then there is a kind of derailment, there is a kind of destruction, there is a kind of deformity. And the Lord is saying, but well, I'll do something better. I said I'll do something better. As you look at your life, the Lord is saying, wipe the tears away. Take all the sorrows away. Take all the agony, the pain, the pain of past mistakes. And the pain of time is lost, money is lost skill is lost everything is lost i've lost everything you've not lost everything there is a god on the throne and that god on the throne is going to make a miracle out of the mistake of your life in jesus name and the lord said can't i do exactly what this father has done to this clay O house of israel behold as the clay is in the potter's hand so are ye in my hand O house of Israel, at what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to block it up and to pull it down and to destroy it. If that nation against whom I have pronounced turn from their evil, I will repent of the evil that I thought to have done unto them. You see, there are some people, when God pronounces a negative prophecy and he says, hey, see what you've done see where you've gone see how far you've gone and the lord says final this is what i'm going to do some people will act like ezekiah he is god let him do what seems good unto him other people will respond like eli well he is god let him do what seems good unto him but god said i just said that that doesn't mean it's final. Even when God, Almighty God Himself, even when He says that this is what I'm going to do because of the sin you've committed, because of the mistake you've made, and because of the way you've gone, it, that's not the time for you to fold your hand and say, God says it's finished with me, therefore it's finished. No, the key is in your hand. You go back to God and you say, I'm like clay in your hand. You will remake me. You will remodel me. And when you come tonight with that word in your mouth, and you say, Lord, I'm clay in your hand. The key is in my hand. Whatever I have done, whatever my parents have done, whatever my neighbors have done, the key now is in my hand. This year will be the best year I've lived until now. 
it is going to be so. I said it is going to be so. Because it says, I will reverse everything. I'm, I'm talking to you on making supernatural miracles out of serious mistakes. Three points. Number one, transforming grievous mistakes to great miracles. Point number one, transforming, transforming grievous mistakes to great miracles. I thought you'd say even amen to that point. Because that's your life. I said that's your life. Whatever grievous mistake or great mistake or agonizing mistake, any, anything that has happened negatively in your life, great miracle. I said great miracle. Signs and wonders. You will be a showpiece in the hand of God in Jesus' name. Point number two. Turning graceless men to gracious members. It's God who's going to do it. And it's going to start tonight. And it will do it in your life in Jesus' name. Turning graceless men to gracious members. Number three, translating godless mischief workers to godlike miracle workers. Did I hear you amen there? Translating godless mischief workers to godlike miracle workers. Then point number four is miracle working prayer. That one is not preaching, that one is prayer. That one is bombarding heaven. That one is present. I'm going to take you like this. I see you in my presence. I see you in them. I will shake every shake of thing out of your life. And then I say, Oh Lord, look at this brother. Look at this sister. Oh, the whole message. Pour it upon this brother. Pour it upon this sister. Make that change you said you are going to make and make it in this individual. It will happen in your life in Jesus' name. Point number one, transforming, transforming, transforming grievous mistakes to great miracles. We're looking at Genesis chapter 45. Genesis chapter 45. Genesis chapter 45. I'm reading from verse 5. In Genesis chapter 45, we see the thing that has happened. And then as they now look back at the things that happened, and they saw that God had brought a miracle out of the mistake. Genesis chapter 45, I'm reading from verse 5. Now therefore, be not grieved, nor angry with yourselves, that ye sold me hither. For God did send me before you to preserve life. You know, when Jacob called Joseph, said, Joseph, yes sir, here I am. Your brothers are over there, and they're doing this and that. I'm sending you to them. And then eventually, you know, when they brought the uh, news back to Jacob, look at the clothes and see whether this belongs to your son Joseph or not. He said, oh, this is my son has died. A wild animal has torn that my son Joseph into pieces. I will not stop mourning and crying until I die. Now Jacob would have been himself every day, what a great mistake I made. What a great mistake I made. If I didn't make that mistake of sending Joseph there, he would not have died just like that. Oh, my son Joseph. Oh, my son Joseph. And then eventually news came. News came. News is coming to you. News came that Joseph is still alive and is the king of the land. And God has turned everything around. God turned Jacob's mistake into a miracle. And then the brothers eventually, when they came over there to buy food, they were asking, them, and Joseph, they didn't know it was Joseph. Joseph said, you are spies. By the life of Pharaoh, I swear that you are spies. And you have come to see the nakedness of them. They said, no, we are 12. And then one is not, and one is at home. That's why you have to, that's why I said that you are spies. And you come to see the nakedness of the land. And then he began to tell one another, see now, the blood of Joseph. And Joseph was here, and you were here then. I said you were here then. You know, it became funny to Joseph because they didn't know that Joseph understood their language because Joseph was speaking with an interpreter. And when he was, and, and was it, there was no smile, and there was no, he was rough with them because he wanted, he wanted them to know that that mistake of that time today has become a miracle. I said, that mistake of that time today has become a miracle. Didn't I tell you the mistake that your mommy made concerning you? It's turning into a miracle tonight. 
and they mistake those teachers and principals and all those uh, house helps. The mistake they made on you is talking to a miracle tonight, and then all the all the things that happen that everybody should be crying about. There's no there's no reason to cry again, because there's a God in heaven. He specializes in taking the mistakes of our lives. He specializes in taking them and making them miracles. Eventually, they saw it was Joseph. He said, Benjamin, see, it's your brother Joseph. And then they were about to, they didn't know whether to get into the ground. And so he said, don't accuse yourself. It is God who has done this. Go tell my father Jacob at home that Joseph is still alive. I'm not dead. You are not dead. I said you are not dead. Why did God preserve your life until this hour, until this moment? He wants to do something. I said he wants to do something. He will do it in Jesus' name. And then he brought news to Jacob. And they said, we saw him. We saw him. Joseph is still alive. And he didn't know whether to laugh or to cry, whether to believe or not to believe. And then he saw the word that was said by Joseph. He said, my son Joseph is still alive. Let me go and see him and die when I see him. And then he got there. He didn't die immediately. He enjoyed the miracle. You are going to enjoy the miracle in Jesus' name. That's what we're told in Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 28. Romans chapter 8, we're looking at verse 28. Whenever you read a verse like this, say, this is for me. Before I read it, say, this is for me. I said, say, this is for me. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And we know, and we know, and we know that all things work together for good. Stop there for a moment. You know, it's not only all the good things, all the things that happen, all the mistakes of people, all things work together for good. All the hatred of people, all things work together for good. All the madness of people, all things work together for good. All the persecutions of people, all things work together for good. All your own carelessness and all your own foolishness that you did in the past, as you come to God, you'll find all things work together for good. All things, all everybody say all things. All things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. It will happen in your life. I'm looking at Numbers, Numbers chapter 21. Numbers, also chapter 22, sorry. Numbers chapter 22, and I'm reading from verse, uh, from verse 21. Numbers chapter 22, I'm reading from verse 21. And Balaam rose up in the morning and settled his house and went for the princes of Moab. Balaam, what are you doing? Well, the king of Moab, Balak, has called me. He said some people are coming from Egypt and they're going to lick up his, ground, his land and he wants me to come and use my prophetic power so that I can curse them and then he'll wipe them out. And he said he's going to give me a great amount of money. You should not go. Yes, I felt I will not go for the man. I said a second time, I will go. I, will, I, I cannot miss that money. Balaam, that was a great mistake. He made a great mistake. But do you know that the mistake of Balaam, God turned it to a miracle. I said God turned it to a miracle. You know, I'm thinking in my heart, what great mistake is this that Balaam has made? But you know, if Balaam did not make, make that mistake, the ass will not speak in tongues. But the ass spoke in tongues. I said the ass spoke in tongues. If Balaam did not make that mistake, an ass and animal will not see an angel, but the ass saw an angel. If Balaam did not make that mistake, all the prophecies he gave, he would not have given all those prophecies. I'm saying that whatever false prophet makes any mistake concerning you, they take your name to the house of a particular. Call them harbalists, call them prophets, call them seers, call them voodoo workers, call them whatever they call them. And they take your name there and say, God, help me. So that they will not open the door. And they open the door for them. Great mistake. But that mistake will turn to a miracle. You see, no matter what happens, no matter what direction is coming from, the Lord has the wisdom. He has the power to turn all those mistakes, to turn everything into miracles. Look at this now in verse 21. God's anger was, was kindled against him because he went. And it says, and the angel of the lost should in the way for an adversary against him. 
Now he was riding upon his hands, and his two servants were, were with him. And, and they have saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way. This is the only time it's recorded in the Bible that an animal, an ass, saw a vision and saw the angel with the sword drawn. And God, God is wonderful. God is awesome. No matter what any Balaam does in your life, God is still there on the throne. Why are we walking about with our heads dropped? And with her shoulders down and then with her heart depressed as if now they are all against me Balaam is against me and Balak is against me and that one is against me and now I am finished you are not finished you are just started with all those Balaams and all those Balaks against you a miracle is coming your way in Jesus name the mistakes of Balaams and Balaams the spot the star of the, the throne of God to perform the miracle in your life the more enemies rise and the more God will arise in your life and scatter those enemies in Jesus name you see it was this that made it immediately immediately the Balaam got out of his house God dispatched the angel from him he said go there and before he ever takes another step meet him there and tell him I'm against him the Lord is protecting you and that protection of the Lord will be permanent in Jesus name in verse 23, and the eyes saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and he saw drawn in the sand, and the eyes turned aside out of the way, and went into the field, and Balaam smote the eyes to turn her into the way. But the angel of the Lord stood in the path of the, of the vineyards, a wall being on this side and a wall on that side. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she thrust herself onto the wall and crushed Balaam's foot. Even the animal punished Balaam. Even an animal will punish them for you. It says, and then it says against the wall, and he smote her again. And the angel of the Lord went further and stood in a narrow way where the ass, where there was no way to turn either to the right hand or to the left. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she fell down under Balaam, and Balaam's anger was kindled, and he smote the ass with his staff. And the Lord opened the mouth of the ass. That's another miracle. I said that's another miracle. God will work miracle around you, upon you, beneath you, everywhere. Just to make sure that every mistake anybody makes concerning you, everything will turn to a miracle. Miracle on the right hand, miracle on the left hand, miracle in your front, a miracle at your back, a miracle on your body, miracle in your family, miracle in your place of work, miracles everywhere in Jesus' name. And then is, and the Lord opened the mouth of the ass and said unto Balaam, What have I done unto thee? That thou hast smitten me these three times. And Balaam said unto the ass, Because thou hast mocked me, I would I would there were a sword in my hand, for now I would I have killed thee. And the ass said unto Balaam, I'm not I thy ass. He gave it the ass intelligence, intelligence to reason. Intelligence to talk like a man. And I see the ass went to school. Well, before I go on, some people say they don't believe in speaking in tongues. If an ass can speak the language understood by Balaam, a saved child of God, a sanctified child of God can speak in tongues. Intelligently speak in the tongues of men and of angels. That's another subject. I'll talk about that another time. I am, I am I not thine ass upon which thou was reading ever since I was thine, oh, I was thine unto this day. Was I ever want to do so unto thee? And he said, nay. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way. And uh, his sword drawn in his hand, and he bowed down his head and fell flat on his face. Well, those are miracles. I said, those are miracles. But the man, Balaam, still went. He still went. What a great mistake. Let me show you something. Deuteronomy chapter 23. Deuteronomy chapter 23, 23. I'm reading from verse 5. The conclusion is that every mistake in your life will turn to a miracle. Chapter 23, verse 5. Verse 5. In verse 5, look at what it says in verse 5. It says over here in verse 5. 
Nevertheless, the Lord thy God would not hearken unto Bela. The Lord thy God will not hearken to the false prophet. The Lord thy God will not hearken to those false soothsayers. The Lord thy God will not listen to your enemies. It is true he will listen to. I said it is true he will listen to. Because he has given you the key. And the key is in your hand. It is what you say that the Lord will listen to. He will not listen to any pillar against your life. But the Lord thy God turned the curse into a blessing unto thee. Because the Lord thy God loved thee. Lord be. He will love you till the end in Jesus' name. I'm looking at uh, chapter 27 of Acts. Acts chapter 27. Transforming grievous mistakes to great miracles. Acts chapter 27. I'm reading there from verse 20. Acts chapter 27 verse 20. The point here is that Paul, the apostle, was, go to, was to go to Rome and he boarded a ship. And then he saw that there was uh, something in front. It's like there was going to be a storm and it was going to be all destroyed. But the centurion, that is the, the captain of the ship, felt, well, he was just a, you know, a preacher. What does he know about sailing? He is just, you know, Paul the Apostle. What does he know? This one this is not preaching. This one is not gospel. This one is spirit. It's not spiritual matter. Uh, let, let's do our work and don't poke nose and don't intrude into this. So he kept quiet. As we were now going, there was a great storm. They almost lost their lives, every one of them. And see it now, chapter 20, chapter 27, verse, uh, verse 20. And when neither sun nor stars, a many disappeared, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. But after, a, after long abstinence, nobody could eat. Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, this should have hearkened unto me. This should have listened unto me and not have loosed from Crete and to have gained this harm and loss. He said, you made a great mistake. I told you, we shouldn't move at that time. Now, everybody's life is now in danger. Don't you realize that they couldn't talk anymore because they knew that that was a great mistake. But look at this, I told you. I told, and I will tell you again, there's no mistake that has been made in your life that will not turn to a miracle. Miracles will happen in your life. Every negative thing will turn positive in Jesus' name. Even the things that people did deliberately, Paul warned them, he told them, let us not move now. This is not the time to move. This is not the way to go. There is danger ahead. And stop only. The steel went on. And now when they got into trouble, you will see that God will say, that's okay for them. I said my apostle is the greatest apostle alive. I sent him to them. I told them this is what to do. They didn't do it. Leave them to their sorrow. Leave them to their calamity. God will not leave it to your calamity. He will not leave it to your problem. It's going to, in the midst of that great mistake that has been made, it's going to turn everything around in Jesus' name. But going to turn now, and now things are different now. I said things are different now. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer. For there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but of the sheep. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am, and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, fear not, Paul. I come to tell you, my brother, I come to tell you, my sister, fear not, brother, fear not, sister. Thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God has given thee all them that still sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God. Tell me, I believe God. Tell me out aloud, I believe God. Let the heavens hear you. I believe God that it shall be, even as it was told me. I believe it shall be, even as it was told me. Everything I told you tonight, I believe. Everything you heard tonight, I believe. The fact that God will take the mistakes of your life and turn everything to miracle, I believe it shall be, even as it was told me. Point number two, turning, uh, turning graceless men to gracious members. I want you to see something. 
I'm looking for the word but now. But now I'm going to read something. It will say this, 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 but now things are different. That 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 but now things are different. And then this when you come to this new year, today is you know is the last and Saturday of December, and then in a few days' time you are coming to the new year. A new man, a new woman, a new career, a new future, a new family, a new provision. And then he'll say, it was like this, but now. It was like that, but now. I was down there, but now. I was back there, but now, but now. I said, but now. I said, but now. Where are the people? But now. But now. You will laugh. You will rejoice. Because there is a but now coming upon your life in Jesus' name. Look at Romans. Romans. We're looking for those words, those words, but now, but now, but now, but now. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 20. Romans chapter 6. We're looking at it from verse 20. It says from verse 20. For when ye were servants of sin, ye were slaves. We were free from righteousness. What fruits are ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. Verse 22, tell me. Tell me out loud. But now be made free from sin. Ye became servants to God. Ye have your fruits unto holiness and the end everlasting life. But now. But now. But now, I'm looking now at Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, and we're reading from verse 12. Ephesians chapter 2, we're reading from verse 12. You'll see this again. It's a but now, but now. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12. That at that time, at that time, that time is past, you are without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of a promise, having no hope in the past without God in the world. Verse 13, tell me. You see that but now? There's always a difference. There's always a difference. There's going to be a difference in your life in Jesus' name. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who were sometimes afar off at midnight by the blood of Christ. Chapter 5 of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 7. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. For ye were sometimes darkness. For ye were sometimes darkness. What follows now? But now, but now, are ye light in the Lord? Walk as children of light. Things are different now. You will never remain the same in Jesus' name. Come into the presence of God makes you different. Just stay in the presence of God. The joy in the presence of God. The faith in the presence of God. And the desire that, Lord, I heard, you are going to change my destiny. You are going to change my life. You are going to change my weakness into strength. Oh, Lord, that's why I come. And because you have come, God will not forsake you. He will not forget you. He will not neglect the need of your heart. That's why he said, this is what you were. But now, it says, but now, look at that verse 13 now. It says, but now in Christ Jesus, you are sometimes far off at midnight by the blood of Jesus. Chapter 5 is actually what we're reading. In chapter 5, verse 7, verse 8, it says, but now, are ye light in the Lord? Walk as children of light. I'm looking at the first Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2, and we're reading there from Verse 9 and verse 10. First Peter chapter 2, reading from verse 9 and verse 10. What words are we looking for? But now, but now, look at this. In verse, in verse 9, it says, But ye are a chosen generation. Give me a good amen. A royal priesthood. And holy nation, a peculiar people. We are now peculiar. I said we're peculiar. Before we were ordinary. But now we're extraordinary. Before, or oh, just come on, just, just, just every day can hurry. And people can put their hand in your eye and put it in your nose. But now you are peculiar, peculiar people that we should show forth the praises of Him who has called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. Verse 10, which in time past 
were not a people, but, but, but are now the people of God. People of God, where are they? People of God. We're people of God in Jesus' name. And the Lord will take care of his people. The Lord will take care of you. Every need of your life, he will supply in Jesus' name. Do you see how he took care of the children of Israel, his people? There was not one sick among them. All sicknesses, all infirmities, and all deformities were taken away. And the same way he took care of his people at that time, he will take care of his people today. But and now, the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. I have mercy today. I said I have mercy today. Philemon, Philemon. Philemon is just before Hebrews. Philemon, I'm reading there. That's only one chapter. And we're looking at verse 11. Philemon, verse 11. Verse 11, it says, Which in time past was to be unprofitable. What follows? But now profitable to thee and to me. Don't you ever say again, I'm useless, but now you're useful? Don't you ever say, I'm unprofitable, but now you're profitable? Don't you ever say, I'm redundant, but now you are important? I said you're important. You know, I, I used to look at those people, they say, VIP, VIP, VIP. What does that mean? And I used to think it's them. When they say VIP, I used to think, look at them, VIP. But when they say VIP now, I say, what do you say VIP now? Very important personality. Very important personality. Very important personality. That's who you are today. I said, that's who you are today. Heaven has made a change in your life. All, you know, we look down on ourselves, not knowing that all you are thinking about is what you were before. But now, but now, but now, VIP in Jesus' name. Because of what the Lord Himself has done. It tells us in Psalm 119, Psalm 119, you think it's so lame. New Testament, we are but now, but now. But look at Psalm 119, verse 67. Verse, uh, verse 67, it says, Before I was afflicted, I went astray. Then, but now I have kept thy word. But now, but now, but now I have kept thy word. Thou art good and doest good. Teach me thy statutes. Things are different in your life. Isaiah chapter 64. Isaiah chapter 64. Isaiah chapter 64. But now, but now. When something similar to what had happened before is happening and you're about to cry, then you, no, I cannot cry again. Because, but now, when the enemies rush at you like they did in the past, because they don't know there's any difference, then you are about to give up. Say, oh, what am I going to do? Then you remember, but now, when it appears fear will seize your heart because of what used to happen, will begin to happen again. Then you, I cannot fear again because, but now, when it appears so weak and then the things that made you weak in the past will come again, and then you want to feel that weakness. I cannot be weak anymore because. But now, let the weak say, I am strong. You are strong in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 64, I'm reading there from verse 6. Isaiah chapter 64, from verse 6. It says, But we all are an unclean thing. That's not the end of the story. And all our righteousnesses are, are spilled there. That's not the end of the story. And we all do fade away as a leaf. Don't stop there. And our iniquities like the wind are taking us away. That's not the end. And there is none that calleth upon thy name and that stirreth up himself to take hold of thee. For thou hast hid thy face from us and hast consumed us because of our iniquities. Don't stop there. Move on. Verse 8. Verse 8. Verse 8. Tell me out aloud. But now, O Lord, thou art our Father. But now, O Lord, thou art our Father. I praise the Lord, a change has come. Heaven has made the change. Heaven recognizes that change. And that change is upon your life in Jesus' name. We are the clay and thou art our potter. 
and we all are the work of thy hand. Point number three, translating godless mischief workers to godlike miracle workers. Translating godless mischief workers to godlike miracle workers. I'm looking at um, Acts of the Apostles chapter 9. Acts of the Apostles chapter 9. And I'm reading there from verse 20. Acts chapter 9. What are you doing from verse 20? Acts chapter 9. And I'm reading from verse 20. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. Who am I talking about here? This is Paul the Apostle. And all that heard him were amazed. They'll be amazed at your life. And he said, is not this he that destroyed them that called on this name in Jerusalem and came hither for that he did for that purpose that he might bring them bound unto the unto the chief priest but saw the increase more the more in strength and confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus proving that this is the very Christ look at this this great mischief worker this murderer and this fellow that was injurious to everybody, God so worked on him. Nobody could preach to him. Peter did not even try to go on. They didn't even organize prayers for him. They didn't come together to say, this man, this son of pastors, that is just dribbling the church like this, let us all pray for him. When nobody was praying for him, Jesus was praying for him. And when he was going to Damascus, everybody was running from him, was hiding from him. He's coming, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming to destroy. And Jesus went to meet him on the way. He was a mischief worker. Everybody had written him up. In fact, when he got converted and he got to Damascus for three days, he was praying. He wasn't, he wasn't eating, praying and fasting. And then God told Ananas, go to this particular street, in this particular house, you will see that man, his soul of thousands. Behold, he prayed. And Ananas said, Lord, what have I done? You are sending me to that man. He came to kill. And the Lord said, no, he has changed. Transformation has come. Transfiguration has come. Now everything is changed. Because they said, the transformation that is taking place from tonight is for you. I said it's for you. A transformation is taking place in your life in Jesus' name. And so go to Anna say, and as that man is transformed already. And then he got there when he got there, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord who appeared to you by the way has sent me to you. You will receive your sight. You will receive your sight. And that you should receive the Holy Ghost, and that man received the Holy Ghost immediately. He began to preach Jesus unto them. And the people said, Is this not the mischief worker? He has become a miracle worker. That power of transformation will come upon your life in Jesus' name. And then we're told in that verse 22, in that verse 22, it says the great thing that happened to that man, that happened in that man, it says in verse 22, but so increased the more his strength and confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus, proving that this is the very Christ. And let's look at chapter 13, chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 1. Acts of the Apostles chapter 13, I and mean, reading from verse 1, it says, Now there were in the church that was in Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon, that was called Niger and Lucius of Cyrene and Manine, which had been which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Telemi. And and so now the name of Saul here was it the first or the last? Tell me, the last, but by the time you get out of this place, it became the first. It was the last, it became the first. He was even happy to be the last because he said, I am the least of all of the apostles. I should not even be called an apostle because I did a great evil, a great havoc. But the Lord took him from the last position and brought him to the first position. And what God has done for him, he will do for you. You will not be at, back, at that back bench forever. You will not be in that tail forever. You will not be hiding yourself forever. Because this new year, there's a new promotion. And the Lord will bring you to that top level in Jesus' name. 
and then he says in verse 2, and as they ministered unto the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, separate unto me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereon I have called them. The Lord did not remember what he did in the past. All that had been blotted out a new day had now begun. Look at verse 4. So when uh, so they being sent forth by the Holy Ghost departed unto Seleucia and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. And it says in verse 6 and when they had gone through the isle unto Paphos they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet a Jew whose name was bad Jesus. Good name, but bad character. I'm sorry for him. Thank God that's not you. I said that's not you. Which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a brilliant man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God but Elimus, the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, who stood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith, then, then, who is also called, something changed, even his name changed, his nature changed, his destiny changed, his ability changed, his understanding changed, everything changed, and filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him, and said, O oh, full of all subtlety, and all mischief, he was a mischief, what can say before, and of all mischief, thou child of the devil, Thou enemy of all righteousness, thou wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord, and now behold the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind and not see the sun for a season, and immediately, everybody say immediately, immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went. And he went out, he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Then the deputy when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of God. You see what happened to Saul? A change came upon him. And that same change is coming upon you. And he said, it was by grace, it was by grace. And that same grace is available to you today. It says in First Corinthians chapter 15, First Corinthians chapter 15, reading there, reading there from verse 9. First Corinthians chapter 15, reading there from verse 9. It tells us in verse 9, verse 9, For I am the least of the apostles, that I am not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God, but by the grace of God. But by the grace of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And His grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. That's the grace here now. And the Lord, He has done it with Paul, and Paul has gone to His reward. Now your own time has come. I said your own time has come. The Lord is saying, Remove all those negative languages from your mouth. I cannot do this. I cannot go there. I cannot be this. I cannot touch that. I cannot do this. Everything has now changed. Because by the grace of God, you will be who God says you will be in Jesus' name. A change has come. Now, what are we saying now? What are you going to say now? Look at Psalm 81. Psalm 84. Psalm 84. We're looking at this. Let's see. Psalm We're going to the Psalms. We're looking at Psalm 81, Psalm 81, verse 10. Psalm 81, verse 10. The same Lord that brought the miracles out of those great mistakes of the past is not telling you that the old time has now come. Psalm 81, verse 10. He says, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, and I will feel it. Open your mouth wide, and I will feel it. Open your mouth wide. I will feel it. This is that night. I said, this is that night. The key is where? Tell me. The key is the key is the key to your destiny is your hand. 
Every door that is closed, every door that is closed, the key is in your hand. And every opportunity you have missed, the key is your hand. The Lord has shown you now, even if it was a mistake or sin or whatever that brought you to where you are now, you will come out of that place in Jesus' name. He says, open your mouth wide and I will feel it. This year must not be like the past years. This 2030 must be a different year. The Lord has made all preparation ready. His angels are ready. The Holy Ghost is ready. Jesus has said, the Lord is ready. The Father himself is ready. He says, now you agree with God and open this door of this year and say, Lord, I am climbing that mountain. I'm going to that top level. I'm going to have that victory. I'm going to have the dominion. All the negative things of the past, everything is cancelled. And whatever you say tonight about yourself is confirmed in heaven in Jesus' name. He says, I'm the Lord your God. I brought you out of the world, out of Egypt. Now it is your turn. Exercise your authority. Open your mouth wide and I will feel it. Rise up and do it. Rise up and do it. You hold the key in your hand. The authority is in your mouth. You have the final say. Whatever happens to your life, it's not Balaam, it's not Balak, it's not Pharaoh, it's not Herod. Whatever happens to your life, it's not any enemy. It is you that have the key. You have the key. And that key, you are going to make use of it right now. You turn that destiny. Turn that destiny. Look at all the mistakes of your life. The mistakes you personally made. This mistake daddy and mommy made, the mistake teachers and principals made, the mistake church people made, the mistake anybody made in your life. And you know, stop just sitting down and regretting and mourning and crying and say, Well, if you didn't make this mistake, I would not have been in this condition, I would not have been in that condition. Let God make a miracle out of that mistake tonight. Let God make a miracle out of the mistakes of your life tonight. Let him turn, let him transform, let him change all the mistakes of your life and turn it into a miracle. He can, he will, he does. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord. Tell the Lord. He will take all those mistakes and turn them, turn them into a miracle. You will take all those mistakes and turn them into a miracle. 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 That's what you will do. That's what you will do. No reason to regret anymore. No reason to cry anymore. No reason to mourn anymore. No reason to be dejected and forgotten. No. I'm forsaken. No. I'm abandoned. No. Things are different now. You make the change. You won't be sick anymore. You're not going to be tormented anymore. You're not going to be afflicted anymore. All those things of the past, they're gone. A new life. A new destiny. A new possibility in your life. The darkness of the past is gone. There's the light of the new day. And the fulfillment of the promises of God. Thank God you are alive until this day. Joseph is still alive. Joseph is still alive. Joseph is still alive. And he's the king of the land. He's the ruler of the land. Joseph is still alive. You're still alive. And things are different now. I saw him. He spoke to me. He gave us all this. And he said, come over. Come over. Come over. Come over. Things are different now. Enemies don't have any final say in your life. Detractors don't have any final say in your life. Slanderers don't have any final say in your life. Mischief makers don't have any final say in your life. Turn it around. Turn it around. Turn it around. It was like that, but now I was a victim, 
but now I'm a victor. I was conquered, but now I'm more than a conqueror. I was sick, but now I am well. I was poor, but now I am rich. I was a slave, but now I'm a master. I was unfortunate, but now I'm a favorite of heaven. I was oppressed, but now I'm delivered. Now I have dominion. That's it. That's it. You have the final say. You have the final say. You have the final say. You decide what you are going to be. You decide how far you are going to reach. You decide how high you are going to soar. It's in your hand. It's in your hand. No Balaam can stand before you. No Balak can destroy your life. It's in your hand. It is in your hand. The word of life is with you right there. The word of power is with you right there. How far you climb, that's what is right there. How happy you are, that's your hand right there. How progressive you become, it's in your hand right there. The mistakes of the past cannot tie you down. The Lord will make a miracle out of everything that happened to you in the past. You have received the message from our pastor, Pastor W.F. Kumoye, the General Superintendent of the Pala Bible Church. It is my wish that as you listen, you will accept the whole world and you will let them sink into the, your hearts. And by the grace of the Lord, you will never regret it. It is my prayer that by next week, when our pastor shall come up again to present another message, you will be there, your family will be there, and your friends. And I believe as you are listening to the message every week, by the grace of the Lord, you will never be the same. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, O oh Lord, because of today's message. We thank you, O oh Lord, because of the one you let us listen to last week, and the one we are going to listen to the next week. By the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, if you tarry, we shall listen together once again next week. And if not, every one of us will be there with you in the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because you are the Lord that answer prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.